What is up, YouTube? I'm Taylor, and I have a new microphone. And it's still a work in progress. So there still might be some staticky bits. Um, the sound might not be 100% synced. I'm really working on it. This is as close to as I ha See? Now, if that lines up, and you hear the ha-ha-ha, uh, while my mouth is making that weird-ass face, then I'm pretty close to doing my job. Trying. I, there's, a bit, there's a bit of lag and disconnect. I'm still learning. It's a new mic. It's a new everything. I'm hoping there's no static. I'm just hoping it doesn't cut out. So those are the two big issues. I'll take the static if it exists. If you hear some, let me know in the comments down below. <laughs> and I'll work on it. One problem at a time, people. One problem at a time. But uh, if it doesn't cut out, I'm going to count that as a win. Because I'll ask Mike if you've been watching for a while. You, you know my issues. <laughs> anyway, this is my weekly comic book review show thing. Recording? I don't know. Is it a show if no one watches? Is it a recording if I do it live? I'm not going to do it live. I guess it's recording then. I don't know. I'm rambling. Uh, here are the comic books I read this week. It was an interesting week. Not a lot of great comics, not a lot of horrible comics, but we'll get into that. Um, thank you for watching. Please hit the like and subscribe button uh, if you like what I'm doing and you know you want to see more of it. I have merchandise up. And yes, I'll stop touching my face. It's been a long day. <laughs> I have merchandise up on taylorwender.com, uh, including a Wisconsin Sinful t-shirt that you might enjoy. You probably won't, but you might if you're from Wisconsin and, and you're a sinner. That's like three of you. Everyone else here is holy and pure, like the driven snow. And I got some other stuff up on there, some evildoer, do-gooder, all that, whatever. Take a look, and if you're interested, buy some stuff. It'll help me out and help me pay for this new mic. All right, on to the comics. Uh, I read some comics this week. I go in order, worst to best, usually, and uh, we'll start with the worst. Although this might be my favorite cover of the week. Uh, it's Teen Titans Future State number two. Wait, no. Future State Teen Titans number two. DC. Titles. Blah. All right. This is Angry Nightwing in the future after something happened, and the team kind of got wiped out, sort of, or possessed or something, and I don't know. It's a muddled mess. Uh, you're supposed to sort of, I think, know who Red X is by the end of this. I don't. Um, you're supposed to know the big bad they're up against. I don't care. And it's kind of, they, they say this is sort of wrapped up. It's really muddled and messy storytelling. And, and yet, it's still kind of dull. It's not just a... I don't know. I really, I just really didn't like it. Yeah, if you if you liked it and you know who Red X is and you care and you think it's going to be a major player, hit me down below in the comments and let me know. But I... Not for me. Not for me. All right. Um, this is a comic I really want to like. It's Eternals. It's Kieran Gillen, who I like, and uh, Asad Rabak, who's, uh, uh, whose art I really enjoy. There's just nothing that's really happening in this one. And there's some narrator. I'm not even sure. I'm not sure who the narrator is. I don't think you're supposed to know quite yet. Um, and there's a really dull murder mystery that they're not solving. And then they, they, they finally reveal why the whole por point of this is mini. I think it's a mini series. They're kind of revealing the purpose of it in here a little bit. And, and I know it's a movie set up, and I knew the movie's coming. The art's gorgeous. Uh, the story just needs to head somewhere. It might move up the list. I have faith in Kieran Gillen. He tends to tell a kind of cold, heartless story. And this is, or at least that's how his, his writing style comes across to me. And this is no different. It's just normally it's cold and heartless, but a little more interesting. This is cold and heartless and just kind of dull. So, all right. Uh, this is not horrible. It's Dar Star Wars Darth Vader. It's number 10. He's got a goofy, really bad assassin along for a ride. He's trying to figure out what the Emperor is up to and... He runs into some weird stuff that doesn't seem super Star Warsy in nature, and it, it got its personal preference of a personal feeling of mine. But like the character design or some of the creature design just doesn't seem Star Warsy in here. If you take that for what it's worth. Not horrible. It is. It's nice to see Vader being kind of cruel again, uh, and you know, and tying it back into the movies a bit. There's some nice bits in here. It's not uh, not bad. It's just not great. And there's not, like I said, this, this, this is a week of not bad, not great. And that falls into that category. Uh, I Breathe the Body, number one. This came out last week when my comic shop was out. I was able to get a copy. And I'm not sure I... <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't get the hype on this. Um, covers. This also might be the cover of the week. Maybe that's the theme of the week, is like mediocre books with really great covers. 
There's some really great covers this week and some a lot of mediocre books. This one, social media is evil. There's also like a weird horror element somewhere in here. Um, you're not supposed to know what's going on quite yet. It's and and uh, Zach Thompson tends to have some like heavy, overarching like societal commentary baked into his storytelling. And this is no different. If you read uh, Lonely Receiver, that really had a lot of that in there, and that was a little more weird than this. This is still weird enough, um, and it still has that social commentary aspect. It's just kind of uh, I don't know. It's not bad. I'll I'll pick up the second one to see where it goes. You know, Facebook's evil. We all get that, right? So, I don't know. Yeah, it is what it is. All right, uh, Thunderbolts, number two. This is not bad either. It's, you know, they're they're trying to be the Thunderbolts of old or, like, you know, have have a bunch of misfits that don't belong together and be ragtaggy and sarcastic-y and badass, and it sort of works. It just falls flat more often than it works. And... The art is interesting. It's it's not your like, who's on the art? Ferreira? 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 It's decent. Uh again, it's if you like Taskmaster, you'll probably like this, or if you like some of these other characters, you might enjoy it. Star still seems wasted. Um Batrock the Leaper is actually they're trying to make him into a badass, which I don't know if I'm buying it, but it's at least a fun attempt. So you know, they're trying to take on Null as as misfits that have no business doing so and probably will fail miserably. I hope they fail miserably. If they fail miserably, it'd be a refreshing tale. <laughs> we'll see. All right. Uh, Sweet Tooth Return. Uh, this is not bad either. I read the first 12 issues of the original Sweet Tooth run finally, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, so I have an idea of where this is going. I've not read the full thing. I just don't have access to it yet. Um, Jeff Lemire always tells an interesting story. A lot of father issues and stuff baked into his tales, and this is no different. There's a, a post-apocalyptic nature. He was one of the original gangsters to do that, though. So he's like, okay, hey, get away with it. Um, Jose Villarubia, I think I'm saying that right, is on the art. And he's I mean, he's a decent job of emulating Lemire, but like Lemire does it a little bit better. Villarubia's art is loose and, and definitely paying homage to Lemire's original run and the original style in here. It's just not quite as clear storytelling-wise. Like... Lemire's art, while it, while it may not have been for everybody, definitely is very clear and, and very precise in, 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 in its storytelling nature. It's sketchy and loose visually, but you always knew what was going on. And this one, there's a few panels in there where you're like, eh, what? But I, it's starting to, starting to tie into the original run a little bit, and uh, it's going to wrap up fairly soon. So, yeah, give it a check out or wait till, wait till trade on it. You know, I, I know I say that in a lot of my reviews, but I'm trying to save you all some money. I spend the money so you don't have to. Or you can spend the money on other things like t-shirts from taylorwinter.com, and then I'll spend the money. And It's a Hakuna Matata, the circle of life. That's that's a thing, right? I never saw Lion King. Um, Devil's Red Bride, issue number five. This is the last issue of this mini. It's a decent wrap-up, to this, and I'll try and stop saying the word decent, but that's kind of what it is. It's a it's an okay wrap-up to this series. Uh, you, it's like the price of selling your soul for a cause. And it's violent, it's over the top, it's samurai goodness, it's visually gorgeous. I like Bivens art quite a bit. Uh, the storytelling is still a little bit, I think it's aiming for it to be a little more poetic than it's hitting, but it, it, it's, it's, again, it's, it's fine. Uh, I, I wanted to like this miniseries more than I did, to be honest. Uh, so, yeah, take that for what it's worth. Neil Gaiman and uh, P. Craig Russell and others at all on uh, Norse Mythology number five. I thought this was the last issue with this, but apparently not uh, because they sort of abruptly stop in the middle of one story. It's like they tell, they like wrap up a tale and then they start the next one instead of just telling one tale per issue and they're starting to bug the hell out of me. Just paste, they should have paced one of them differently so you could have one story per issue. I, the weird non cliffhanger nature of it and stuff, I, I don't, I don't love. Um, art's okay. Peacock Russell's doing the layouts, and then it's either David Rubin or Jill Thompson are finishing it up, and that's that's fine. Uh, Peacock Russell's on the scripting. I think that's where the problem's running into with uh, some of it. It's just telling old or Neil Game like retelling of Neil Gaiman's retelling of Norse mythology, and so yeah, it's there's nothing super special about this. To be honest, it's a uh, it's okay. It's it. If you like Norse mythology and you like Neil Gaiman, you're going to probably like this. You're not going to love it. It's not It's not any of them at the top of their game. It's not Peter Russell at the top of his game either. It's like the middle of their game. 
It's like the middle of the basketball season, you know, where everyone's just kind of playing. Okay, uh, Radiant Black, number one. Cool art, okay story. Have you ever seen The Greatest American Hero? You're probably not, because you're not as old as I am. Actually, you are. According to the demographics, most of you are, so don't, don't try and hide it. Uh, loser Slub finds a hero suit. We'll see where it goes, but uh, that's about it. it, it maybe the loser Slub thing's a little too strong. The, the story's just making the case that he's down on his luck and not that much of a loser. So he'll probably end up being really good at being a superhero, and then he'll be a really boring story. But it's yeah, as of right now, it's like learning to use a suit, and yeah, we'll see. Uh, Daredevil number, what number is this? I don't even, 27, okay. It's Chichetto, it's Zdarsky, Chichetto, and Hawthorne. Hawthorne's art doesn't fit, and I know I'm not the only one to say that. Chichetto stuff, when he's doing it, is great. Uh, King and Black, it's a little ham-fisty with how they resolve the, like, the, the cliffhanger from the last issue, and, uh, Zdarsky's normally not quite that, like, punchy in the face with what he's, what he's getting at, and this one kind of does. It's still good. It's still better than like most of the Drek Marvel puts out. Don't get me wrong. It's just not at, at the high like the level that some of the other issues have been. And the the Daredevil in prison thing is just getting a little goofy. Like not, not to give a whole lot of spoilers away, but somehow they run into a really old timey electric chair in prison. So that I don't think that's and they just get to it. Maybe that's how it works. I've not been to prison, jail, whatever. I don't even know the difference. I should know the difference maybe, but doesn't matter. It just doesn't seem like that's that's how they would do the thing even. The, the electrocuting doesn't... Yeah, and you have a, on the other hand, you have Electra struggling with being the new Daredevil, uh, Devil, and that's a little more interesting to me, because she's trying to do it Daredevil U's way, and it's not working so well. So, that story's better than the Matt Murdock in jail. Prison? Uh, yeah. Sorry. I Walk with Monsters, number three. This is okay, but it just needs to get somewhere. You sort of get the story, a little bit more backstory on both both the characters here, a little bit. Um, do you learn why the, I think the monster, the, the character, I, as far as I know, the characters are nameless. Maybe they do have a name and I just missed it and I have to go back and reread. But you get to learn the, sort of the, the guy, the guy that turned, yeah, that, his story a little bit, a little bit. And why he's helping the, the protagonist or the lady out with her, with her mission. Um... Yeah, it's it's fun. It's not fun. This is not a fun topic. It's a heavy topic, and they're trying to like wrap it into like a little bit into a superhero. -y. Not super. No, that's the wrong word too. It's a okay. Let me back up. This is kind of a filler issue, which is it seems like it shouldn't be at this point. It seems like they should progress the plot a little more than they have. Like the first issue was pretty plot driven, and these last two have kind of like slowed it down, and they just need to speed it back up again. I'll still keep picking it up, but they just need to get 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 somewhere with it. Uh, homesick pilots. I like this cover better than the other one, so I picked this one up. There's another couple covers to it. The you know punk man trap one where one of the punk rockers is trapped in the haunted house that's actually haunted and like doing things, and she's trying to fight her way out. And then one of the bandmates is, in this one is trying to like get to her. And you sort of learn a little bit of the, the bandmate's story a little bit and the outside effort that he's putting in to, like, rescue her. It's horror. It's, you know, that got some horrific, um, mildly horror elements to it. It's just kind of more of, a, like, a punk rock uh, character drama um, that's fairly well done. I, I enjoyed it. It's not, again, not great. The other, like, the first issue I thought was great, and the second and third are good. And this is this is in the good part. Uh, Origins, number four of six. Post-apocalyptic, running from giant things. The art is trippy. I think last time I compared it to Phil Hester, and I was it Phil Hester. That if I did, I was mistaken because I mixed these two up in my head. Ted McKeever is more along the lines of whose art I meant. And if maybe maybe I said Ted McKeever last time, but I don't remember. So yeah. It's 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 a good story. The the art I think is digitally painted, and that makes sense. Uh, I actually like the Rebecca's uh, robot designs a lot. They're kind of and and in general his palette and his and most of his stuff. There's a few panels in here that are just kind of muddy though, and you're like, what is going on? And the story itself, there's not a whole lot to it. 
it's they're they're on the run from a corporation. They're still on the run from a corporation trying to get to like this guy's base. So it's more pacing than anything else. Like they didn't need last issue and this issue could have been one issue, I think. Rorschach uh, number I don't know whatever five. I love these covers. Like I really do, and uh, I like the story a lot. It's it's. You know, set either before, it's set after the original Watchmen, which I know Alan Moore hated and well didn't want anybody playing in his playground, which I get. And uh, Tom King's doing a pretty delicate job of playing there, I think. And uh, I will keep reading this. There's an ending to this where you're kind of questioning what's actually going on, and you're not really sure. And I'm still not really sure. Uh, and I like that. I like the mystery that within a mystery that's going on in this. Uh, definitely homages to like old comic creation. And, like, the art of comics and the history of comics in here. I can't give away a whole lot of this without, like, giving away a whole lot of the plot. And, but, yeah, if you like the Watchmen, the TV series, you'll probably enjoy this. And if you enjoy the Watchmen, the regular comic, and you come in with an open mind, you'll probably like this. If you don't like Tom King, you're not going to like this. Bliss number five. Uh, this is a weird book. All of, all of Bliss has been pretty weird. Yeah, it's... Uh, Strange drugs that uh, you know come from a goddess, a turtle that's try that's a mobster that's trying to overthrow her, and a drug dealing dad that's trying to make amends, and a son that's trying to save his drug dealing dad who was dealing drugs to save his son, and then murdered a lot of people along the way and did a lot of evil. Now the son is trying to come to terms with that and save his father. And yeah, I know that's a little spoilery, but like we're on issue five of this one, so if you've not picking, been picking this up, you're probably not going to. And it's a shame. It's a it's a very interesting storytelling. It's it's a unique approach to comics, I think, and the, the art style is unique. I still am trying to like. I have no clue how this is going to end up. I, I I do. I have a feeling. I know, but it's taken enough twists and turns. Where you're like, uh, okay, you you've got my attention, and it's held my attention through five issues. So, bravo! Uh, one of the better books of the week. Again, not not touching greatness yet, but I, I think uh, uh, when it wraps up, it has a potential if it wraps it up well. And I think the last issue is the, the next issue is the last, but I could be mistaken. Don't hold me to that. Uh, I've been wrong before in things that I think are f like miniseries are turned on to be ongoing. I hope I hope this is not ongoing. I don't think it, it the the method of storytelling that they're they're working with leads itself to an ongoing tale. I think it's going to have to have a finite ending. And I think we're headed towards it. I think I, I have a feeling it'll be either the next issue or maybe the issue after that. So, Bliss, pick it up if you want a weird, yeah, drunk, trippy kind of book. All right, and this is my book of the week. Again, it's not, not, for, how do I put this? Again, this week, there's nothing that really, really stood out. I probably could have swapped out a couple of these and had them be the book of the week. They're all about that same level in my head. This is Black Hammer's Visions number one. Pat Oswalt's the writer on this, uh, you know, the comedian and writer, and Dean Holt Coates, Cots, Coates, Cots, whatever, uh, on the writing. And I, I need to actually read the original Black Hammer series. I have not. It's another, based on the world of Black Hammer, based on the Jeff Lemire universe, and so what I do know is, like, the Black Hammer people were trapped inside this town, and, uh, the Black Hammer Heroes, and that 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 pay, plays a lot into their story, and this is one of the characters from it. She's a fifty year old lady that transforms into like a ten year old when she says her super words, so like like kind of the reverse of Captain Marvel or Shazam. Um, but since she made it into the black into the town of not a Black Hammer, but of the town of wherever the heck they are, she can't transform transform back. And so this is like outside girls and characters noticing that like she doesn't age and like their reaction to it, and it's an interesting, interesting method of telling the story. It's intriguing. It's a one-shot as far as this story goes. Um, I think they're all one-shots of, like, like just, just different writers and artists that have been invited to play in the Black Hammer Playground. And, yeah, I thought it was an enjoyable tale, and Brad Patton had also had a pretty interesting take on on the situation from the outside, uh, you know, point of view of two other characters that, you know, I don't think I don't think I've been seen before in the Black Hammer universe. I could be wrong, but they're two like tangential characters, and that's how they interact with the the superhero in this one. And the message there's a pretty decent message message too. It's kind of like a feel goody comic in a weird twisted superhero way where 
the main superheroes miserable and trapped in the body of a 10 year old so yeah it feel, but I feel good, you know. So, all right, there you have it. I am hoping beyond hope that my mic survived this and it's a new mic and didn't clip out or do anything wacky. I'm going to check it, uh, and we'll go from there. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. If you did come across audio issues, let me know. I'll work on getting everything better. It's, it's going to be a process. I know that much. Like, I'm not expecting per perfection for the, <laughs> the first time out. I've learned better than that. Uh, so... That's about it, everybody. Have a good day. Have a good night. Have a good whatever the tech time you watch this. And as always, don't be a dick. <laughs>